guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new without further ado let's go ahead and get straight to today's video so in today's video we're going to be doing our very first halloween nail set for 2024 and i'm not gonna lie i'm a little bit late so my apologies i do hope to maybe get about four or five halloween nail sets even if it goes over into november because i don't really care about like getting done before the 31st plus i have like 10 days left so i don't want to only do like two or three because that's no fun so for today we're going to be doing some sort of like vampire esque nails and i really wanted to start with something that was kind of simple but not like too simple because you guys know that's not really my taste and i feel like i kind of do vampy nails at least once a year so i felt like it was time to do them once again but onto the nails we are going to go ahead and start off with a little bit of nail prep but before i do anything i always like to make sure to cleanse my implements as well as my nails this is something that i like to do regardless of if my nails or my tools are clean already i just like to make sure that everything is nice and sanitized and the first thing I'm gonna do is take my cuticle pushers and just gently push everything back Before I go ahead and start clipping the excess cuticle, I'm gonna go in with my cuticle bit here. And this is just a random cuticle bit that I don't really use that often, but I do like the fact that the tip is nice and rounded because I felt like it would be a lot more gentle on my cuticle area. If you guys can't tell, I do have a good bit of damage on the surface of my nails. So making sure that I'm being as gentle as possible is my top priority right now. So I'm just gently grazing this around the surface of the nails and I'm making sure to use this on a pretty low speed Speed, and I do believe that I use this at about three to four thousand RPMs. Next, I'm going to go ahead and gently cut back the excess cuticle. And for this part, I'm really only focusing on the parts that are kind of white and crusty. I don't want to go overboard and start cutting into my skin because that can lead to inflammation and pain. And if you cut too much, it can actually lead to you getting bacteria onto the surface and into your skin, which in turn can lead to infections, which is definitely not fun to have. So that's all the grooming that I'm gonna do for today. And next I'm gonna go in with my peel off base coat. But before I do anything, I'm just going to once again, cleanse the surface of my nails with a little bit of alcohol. And now I'm gonna go in with the tiniest bit of cuticle oil. And I just like to use whatever cuticle oil I have on hand. It really doesn't matter. I just like to use it for the extra bit of protection for my nails. I do like to use an actual peel off base coat, but even still it sticks pretty well. And I do like to take my nails off pretty much after I'm done filming. So the oil just makes it a lot easier and just not as painful to remove. But of course it's not necessary to use a cuticle oil. You can just go straight in with this peel off base coat. And for me, because I do like to use acrylic i am going to go in with two layers of this peel off base coat and i'm going to cure each layer for a full 60 seconds
So now we're gonna get into the nail tips and for today I'm gonna be using these extra long stiletto nail tips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and size them out as normal. I like to make sure that these nail tips fit sidewall to sidewall. Now what I did do that was kind of weird is I actually did size these out and then I also used square nail tips to extend these which we will see a little bit later because these nail tips were not really long enough for me and I wanted these to be super super long. So I am going in with my my XXL nail tips as well. Now for convenience, you don't have to use something this long, but I don't really have any shorter nail tips that are square. So yeah, I definitely think it would be a better idea to use maybe coffin nail tips if you have some because they're already kind of tapered and I did have to go in with a nail file to correct the shape afterwards, but even still, it definitely worked the way I expected it to. So I didn't really mind too much. And also if you don't know, my pinky nail is gonna be a little bit different because I'm I'm not going to be working on top of it probably for the next year and a half maybe and for those of you who don't know i am currently treating my nail fungus on my pinkies so so i do want to make sure that i'm kind of maintaining the health of my nails as best as i can so for now we're just going to put that to the side and we're going to work on that a little bit later so to glue on these nail tips as always i'm going to be using just a little bit of base coat and to help me cure those on i'm going to be using my gooseneck lamp which of course will always be linked in my description box along with all of the other products mentioned in today's video Now before I do anything else, I'm just going to cut down these square nail tips. Again, it's not necessary to use such long nail tips because we're just using these as an extender. So if you have short square nail tips or even a short coffin, that would definitely work a lot better for this. And after I cut down the tip, I'm just going to make sure that I cut off enough because I don't want these to be super long and I kind of had a length in mind that I wanted to go for. But of course, you can cut this down as much as you want or as little as you want. So after I have the nail tips kind of cut down, I'm just gonna scuff the very edge of that nail tip because we're gonna be putting these little tips on the edges of these ones. And we wanna make sure that there's at least a little bit of friction for these to stick to, but definitely do feel free to use no glue if you feel like that works best for you. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to go over the overlapping section with a little bit of base coat. And the reason I do this is because my nail tips tend to just pop off, you know, whenever they want. And it's just really inconsiderate and not fun. So the base coat, I feel like just helps to provide an extra bit of strength for once I go ahead and start filing these. And once that's cured on, I'm gonna remove the sticky layer and we're gonna go ahead and start shaping up these stilettos. Now for the most part, these are almost perfect, except I wanna make sure that these square nail tips and these stiletto ones match up just a little bit better. And during this portion, I'm not gonna be able to get it super perfect, but I just wanna make sure that I don't have too much work to do once I move on to the shaping and filing after the application process. So the goal here is to clean it up just a little bit.
So now we're on to the application and for today I'm going to be using clear acrylic for the entire base of these nails and yeah we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into it. For today I decided it would be extra relaxing and just calming to watch it in real time. So yeah this is my real time, my actual speed and as you can see I don't move the fastest but I also try not to move too slow especially because it is a lot better to work with wetter beads when you're using clear acrylic so I kind of have to work slightly faster than normal but anyways I don't really want to talk too much about the application portion however I did kind of want to catch up just a little bit so as you guys know my last video was posted on October 12th which was my birthday actually and I am 22 years old which is so 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 crazy like I don't know I can't even believe that I'm like in my 20s like I still can't wrap my head around it and I'm 22 it's kind of crazy anyway as I was saying the last time I uploaded was the 12th and it is currently the 22nd as I am doing this voiceover and it has literally been 10 days since my last upload so I wanted to go ahead and just talk more about my upload schedule and I guess how I want to move forward with my content from here on out so my upload schedule recently has been kind of weird and out of whack so for the most part I try and upload at least once a week if not twice so I usually try and have a video up by Wednesday or Saturday but for the past couple of months actually that has just not really happened like I've just been really bad with actually filming so I really want to get back on top of that because discipline and just doing what I'm supposed to do when I'm supposed to do it and not procrastinating is definitely very difficult for me I got to do better like it's just it's too much okay but yeah i really want to get back to posting twice a week but one of the biggest things that i'm kind of dealing with right now is making sure that i can stay on top of my upload schedule while also trying to do different things such as this which if you guys haven't noticed i am trying to switch over into a more cinematic style which definitely takes a lot more effort and time to film so it's been really fun but also really challenging so with that being said definitely let me know how you guys feel about this type of style this is my third installment of this more like relaxing and cinematic style and it's something that i'm definitely still working on and struggling with because again it takes a lot more effort and i'm a one woman show so everything that you see here is done by me between filming and editing and you know the cinematography all of that is 100 from me and that's not me even like trying to brag or anything i'm just saying like it definitely takes a lot of time so it's definitely an adjustment that I'm looking forward to working with. I have been listening to your feedback when it comes to these types of videos and I'm super happy that you guys are enjoying it and I really do hope to create more content like this because it's different. I've been trying to do different things with lighting and angles and for the most part I think the angles are still kind of a little bit wonky but I think I can definitely work with it. My biggest issue is trying to figure out a great I guess lighting setup because some people do feel like it's a little bit too dark, some people feel like it's a perfect lighting so again let me know what you guys feel about that in the comments. But yeah overall it's just been super fun to kind of do something different and just tap more into an artsy style. But yeah as I was saying that's kind of interfering with my uploading schedule so I really do hope to kind of get back into the swing of things. But anyways, while we're here, I guess I'll talk a little bit more about my birthday and just what I've been doing since I've been gone for 10 days. So for anyone who knows me personally knows I don't really do too much for my birthday or like holidays or anything. I'm actually going to be going out this Saturday, so that's pretty fun. But for the most part, I don't think I'm going to do anything. However, during the 10 days, I actually did dye my hair, which was so, so fun. And I'm actually like still trying to get used to it, like having this new color in my hair is so odd and just different and weird. So a little while ago I actually posted on my community tab that I was kind of sick of the red and it was honestly fading so so bad and I asked you guys what color you guys would like to see me dye my hair and you guys suggested green and that is what we did. So I'll put some pictures on the screen so you can see and you guys I love it so so much. I feel like a new version of me like I just feel so so much better but anyways that was really fun and I don't know I feel like now that I've dyed my hair this color I feel like I just want to go crazy now like I feel like my next color might be something even more bright and in your face even though my hair is like literally lime green anyway so yeah I just want to say thank you guys for the suggestions on my hair color and yeah I really think that it was a great suggestion I was a little nervous because some colors definitely make 
make my skin tone look a little bit weird like i was afraid of looking kind of sick because i don't know i just felt like green wouldn't be the best for my undertone but surprisingly it looks really good so yeah thank you guys anyways i don't really want to sit here and talk your ear off because this is supposed to be the most relaxing part of the video so i'm gonna go ahead and be quiet for now and let you guys enjoy the rest of this application and of course we'll be back to shape and file in the end
so the application is done and now we're going to go ahead and start shaping these nails up and the first thing i like to do is go in with a nail file just to reinforce the shape of the nails Once the sides are nice and shaped up, I'm just going to take that same nail file and just go over the entire surface of the nail. Now for this portion, I like to make sure to keep a little bit of thickness towards the tip of the nail. And that's because I like my stilettos to be super pointy when you're looking at it straight ahead. But once you put it to the side, you want to make sure that there's a little bit of thickness just to make sure that the tips aren't breaking off in the future. But other than that, I'm just going ahead and smoothing out the surface. And because my application is pretty clean, I don't really have to put in too much effort here. I'm just making sure that everything is nice and level. up the shaping i'm gonna go in with a carbide bit just to go ahead and seal my cuticles now you don't necessarily have to use a carbide bit like i am but i do feel like it definitely helps to create a smoother surface but if you are a beginner or you are prone to rings of fire definitely do be very very careful even i still get rings of fire especially around my cuticle area because i can get a little bit extra and i can kind of like go too hard and start filing into my cuticle area which is definitely not great for the health of my nails so if you feel more comfortable using a sanding band or a nail file definitely feel free to use that instead but I do like using this bit because it's a little bit faster and it creates a really really nice smooth surface And afterwards, I'm just going ahead and greasing over the surface using the same bit. And I like to do this in replacement of buffing my nails with a mini buffer because I'm lazy. And this just does a really great job of getting rid of those really large scratches. So that way, once you move on to the nail art, you have a good smooth surface to work with. So now we're going to go ahead and get into today's nail art and this nail set is actually inspired by a nail set I found on Pinterest. Unfortunately, I was unable to find the original artist, but of course credit where credit is due. So I'm first just going to go ahead and get all of my brushes and tools ready and I'm just going to set up my color palette for today. And honestly, the colors for this nail set is pretty straightforward. It's just black and red, but I also did throw in a couple of glitters, which I've actually never used before. And these are colors that I typically don't use but I decided to save them just in case one day I might use them. So of course, again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, all of the products that I use in today's video will be in my description box. Now, the majority of these colors are from Nail Reserve LA, so do beware that they are a bit on the pricey side, although I will say they are definitely worth it. 
I don't really use gel polish as much as I think I do. And a lot of these bottles that I have have lasted me a very long time. So if you're looking for some good quality gel polishes, I would definitely recommend that brand. And this goes without saying, I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I just really enjoy their products. So once my colors are ready, I'm gonna start working on my pointer finger. And I'm just gonna say this now, this video won't be super tutorial based. I'm not gonna completely walk you through every single process. However, I will just kind of pop in here and there to kind of further explain what I'm doing, but it won't be super guided, if that makes any sense. This video is more for your entertainment and relaxation. But anyways, I'm working on the pointer finger and this one has mainly the blooming gel sort of marble effect. And for this nail, I ended up using a Beatles red gel polish mixed with a little bit of black just to make it a little bit darker. Now, one thing I will say is that it was a lot more sheer than I anticipated, mainly because I am using the Beatles brand. So unfortunately, I had to do this in two layers because it just wasn't really doing what I thought it would do. And I still didn't really like it that much, but it wasn't something that I was going to dwell on because overall, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But if you are following along, I definitely recommend using a gel polish that's a little bit more opaque so that the blooming gel sort of marble effect stands out a little bit more. Now, after I have the blooming gel done, I'm gonna go in with a layer of matte top coat. And this is because I'm gonna be going over this nail with some chrome gel paints. And because the chrome is so shiny, I'm not gonna be able to see really much of what I'm doing. So the matte top coat just really helps to differentiate the matte from the shiny. Now this gel paint that I'm using is from McCart and this is something that I've never used before. So in this video, it was my first time using it and I will say that it was pretty good. The only chrome gel paints that I've used in the past were from, I believe, Madam Glam and Born Pretty. Now the one from Born Pretty was super, super shiny. However, it was so slippery, like it was so easy to mess up your line work because of that really slippery, oily base. And the one from Madam Glam was really great. It had a nice thick consistency consistency. However, it had a grainy appearance and it just wasn't my cup of tea, but I feel like this is a really great medium between the two. You get that nice shiny effect without it being super slippery. It's still slippery, but it was a lot easier to work with. So yeah, I actually really did enjoy this product. And with the chrome gel paint, I'm just going in and creating some random like lines and swirls honestly it's supposed to kind of replicate the sort of y2k lines and swirls and i just kind of had fun here and did whatever i wanted and what i was feeling like so definitely feel free to play around with it and see what you like So now we're gonna move on to our middle finger and this one's a little bit interesting. We're actually gonna be doing a sort of smoky effect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this little brush and I'm just going to very messily lay down some black gel polish. And I wanna keep most of that gel polish isolated towards the center of the nail. And again, it's pretty messy, so I'm not really focusing too much on being super neat or anything. 
So once I have the right amount of black gel polish, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of acetone just to sort of water down and marble the edges of the snail. This kind of helps to create that marble sort of watercolor effect. And I did make sure to do this in about two layers because I wanted the center of the nail to be the darkest. this point I'm going in with a little bit of blooming gel because I decided to add just a little bit of red as well as the silver glitter. In all honesty the blooming gel was not necessary but I was a little bit nervous and I did want it to kind of spread just a little bit and while I'm here I should mention that if you don't have any blooming gel base coat is definitely a good substitute. It probably won't spread nearly as fast as blooming gel but it definitely does help to create a very similar effect so if you don't have any blooming gel feel free to use base coat. I probably should have used that here um, because again I don't feel like the blooming gel was necessary but yeah that is what I used and I decided to add a little bit of glitter to this nail because it was so so dark because of the heavy amounts of black so I felt like the glitter just helped to brighten it up just a little bit Before I get into the chrome, I am once again going over this with a layer of matte top coat just to make sure that I am able to see what I'm doing when I'm working on top of the snail. And for this snail, it's actually going to be some 3D line art and not necessarily super 3D, but it is going to kind of stand out from the background. So the main portion of this snail is just a 3D chrome heart in the center, but instead of it being a traditional heart, it's more in tune with again, the sort of Y2K aesthetic. And then at the tip of the nail, I'm just adding some 3D swirls. I'm not exactly sure what this nail art is called, but if you all remember back in the spring when everyone was doing this sort of rhinestone glue effect, that's basically what it is, except it's only on the tip of the nail. Now, once I have the rhinestone glue on there, I'm just gonna cure that for a full 30 seconds. And afterwards, I'm just gonna trace over the rhinestone glue using this chrome gel paint. Now, remember at the beginning when I said that this one isn't as slippery? So right here, I just wanna emphasize that it's not as slippery. So it's definitely still kind of difficult to work with. So I kind of messed up just a little bit. A lot of my mistakes had to get turned into, I guess, additions to my nail art. So I would mess up and like end up getting a spot somewhere and I would just have to turn it into the nail art somehow. And in the end, luckily it wasn't too bad. So, you know, I got a little bit lucky, but definitely do be careful when you are working with this stuff. And it's a really good thing that I did use matte top coat underneath this because if I accidentally messed up and had to wipe it off, you might actually end up getting rid of some of the blooming gel effect. So yeah, do bear in mind that you will have to be super careful during this step.
For my ring finger, I'm actually going to be starting out by creating a nice red aura in the center of this nail. And for that, I will be using this eyeshadow palette that is, of course, in my description box. And in this palette, they didn't have a dark red, so I ended up mixing a little bit of red, brown, and purple. And honestly, it worked pretty well. I didn't think that it would look as red because I added the purple, but it actually looked pretty good. And after I'm done with that, I'm gonna go over this nail with a layer of blooming gel. And similarly to what I did on my index finger, I'm gonna be doing here as well, except instead of it being mainly red, it's gonna be mainly black. Once again, I'm going to be going in with some chrome detailing. To finish off this nail, I'm going to be adding a small cross charm in the center. And I really do like this cross because it definitely gives goth sort of vampire vibes. So to attach this cross, I'm going to be using a little bit of rhinestone glue and I'm just going to quickly cure that down using my gooseneck lamp. And just for some extra pizzazz, I guess, I'm gonna be going in with a couple of silver beads as well. So now we're on to our thumbnail and this one is very similar to the middle finger except instead of it being black and some red it's going to be red with some black and also i did decide to lay these colors down a little bit differently so instead of just randomly putting some of those colors on i'm going to kind of try and marble it as i place it down and i'm also going to be using mainly glitters for this nail i just feel like it made it extra cute and i don't know while i'm here i was kind of nervous about this nail set because it's definitely kind of bloody looking and i don't even know if that's appropriate for youtube but anyways i thought the glitter would kind of help to disguise that a little bit especially for the thumbnail it kind of gives blood and like gory i don't know it's kind of the vibe i was getting but yeah anyways i laid those colors down and i just kind of spread them out with some of that acetone afterwards i'm gonna take some rhinestone glue and i'm gonna be creating i guess an upside down heart on this snail and i actually did these blobs in about two layers because i wanted these to be super thick in 3d and after i did one round of the blobs i did make sure to cure this in between and these blobs are going to go all the way down the nail
Lastly, we are onto our pinky nail and I will be honest, this nail was kind of a fail. So I think that where I went wrong was just being lazy with this nail set because this nail is actually supposed to kind of have a black aura in the center. However, I didn't have any black like eyeshadow in the palette so i decided to use a little bit of blooming gel and some black gel polish now i feel like in a normal scenario this would work just fine but because i was honestly just ready to be done with this nail set i used way too much black gel polish and it just ended up making this nail a little bit too thick and it did start to ripple on the sides a little bit luckily i was able to cover that up a little bit but i would recommend just doing the aura effect the normal way so if you happen to have any black eyeshadow definitely use that or if you have the airbrush tool that works even better but yeah definitely don't do this method unless you are willing to do this in multiple layers but yeah um either way i think it still looked pretty good So after I've got that aura effect, I did go over the snow with a layer of matte top coat. Again, I do want to be able to see the difference between the matte and the shiny. And now I'm going to be taking some rhinestone glue and I'm going to be creating a sort of spiky border around this nail. It's pretty straightforward. I'm basically just creating a thick border and then just dragging out little sections into the center of the nail. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and cure that for a full 30 seconds. And lastly, to finish off the snow art, I'm going to trace the rhinestone glue with some of that chrome gel paint. So the nails are all done and this is what they are looking like. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the look with a couple of rings. And lastly, I'm just going to finish off this nail set with a little bit of cuticle oil. And that completes today's set. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think this nail set was a really great one to start off my Halloween nails. It's definitely simple, but it definitely still gives spooky, dark, goth, and I just love that. I don't really do nail sets like this that often, but of course, definitely let me know what you guys think of this nail set in the comments. I just love the length of these nails. I don't think I've ever done stilettos this long in a video before, so this was definitely a very fun experience for me. Like, I don't know. I feel like the length gives this nail set a couple of extra points, and speaking of points, if I were to put this nail set on a scale of 1 to 10, I would definitely give this nail set a good 8 out of 10, and the reason for the lower score today 
today is because I kind of feel like some of the art is kind of metal together and not as defined as it could be, if that makes sense. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments, as I said before. But as always, I wanted to thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today and I will see you guys in the next one.